eternal Father, for the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Praise God. I know we are few, but we can do better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, some two wicked arm robbers broke into a couple's house and after robbing them of everything they had, they decided to take their wickedness a notch higher. Pay attention to this story because I will tell it again and again. And they brought out a gun and told the man and the wife, either one of you dies today or two of you will die. Either one of you dies or two of you will die. So the only way that two of you will not die is that one of you have to shoot the other. So they gave the man the gun and told him, shoot your wife. Remember, if you don't shoot her and we give her, she doesn't shoot you, we will not kill both of you. The man collected the gun, put it on the wife's head, he couldn't muster the courage to pull the trigger. He tried, no. He dropped the gun and said, I can't kill my wife. Then they now gave the woman. The woman took the gun, pointed at the husband's head, and pulled the trigger. Fortunately, unfortunately, there was no bullet. And the robber started laughing at the man and said, see who you want to kill yourself for. And they left. If you are the man, what will you do? All men. All men, stand up, stand up. Chidi, stand up. All men, here, yeah, stand up. All men, come out, come out. We are going to answer. Chief, come, chief, you answer first. Please come. Quick, 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 quick. We don't have time. Come, come. Come, come. Let's be honest. If you are married, I'm talking about men who are my love boys who are... Uh, all men, please, we are not many here, thank God. Without wasting my time, tell me, answer my question. If you are the one, will you still live with that woman in your house? Will you forgive her? Yes, because I, I forgive. The spirit of forgiveness that is in me, not only the love, but forgive. Chief, why I don't trust this your answer? <laughs> why I don't trust this answer? <laughs> you will forgive her? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, Chidi. I know that um, in one of the Gospels, Jesus said that if you love only those, only those who love you, you're not different from the Pharisees. That the only thing that separates you and makes you a Christian is loving those that hate you. So you will love her? I will love her. I will continue loving her. Take her into your house. Still, okay? I have good men in the um, It's very difficult. Very, very difficult. To be sincere. I will forgive, but I will separate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like this sincerity. Thank you very much. Hurry up, hurry up. Tell me, don't be afraid. Um, I will just be sincere. I will forgive. Straightforward, I will forgive. For the sake of the kids, I will forgive. For the sake of his children. All right. Uh, well, I think uh, I buy his answer. Uh, I will forgive because we are asked to forgive. To love and to forgive. So, 
when we love, if you don't forgive, then you are not, you are not loving, or you have not loved. Okay. To me, I will, I will forgive, but I take his answer as well. But she, can, she, she, she can't do it. Before we break another day. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I will forgive definitely, but uh, I will be looking at her somehow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, myself, I will also forgive, but the thing will be in my memory forever. <laughs> you said? I will not forget that incident, even though I've forgiven her. His my in-law is marrying my sister. Are you afraid of what I will do? <laughs> Please sit down and put your hands together for them. Thank you very much. Um, shall we all agree that it is not going to be an easy situation? Eh? And I'm still suspicious of those who say they will forgive. I'm still suspicious of those who say um, they will forgive because hmm, somebody who will kill you when, when the opportunity is there. We will leave that story for further um, um, uh, lessons to be done. The point I want to make here is that the commandments of God, they are not easy. They are not easy at all. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what? You will keep my commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, you will come to church or you worship. Worshiping God is one of the commandments and it's, one of, it's the simplest when we come to church on Sunday, we are worshiping God. It's one of those commandments. But it is simpler because eventually now we enjoy and pass God's self. We enjoy the worship more than God. The music, everything. But the other commandments, so the question is, what are those commandments? He didn't say, keep my commandments. I said, no, keep my commandments. What are those commandments? You go to Matthew 5. He begins to tell you, you have heard how it was said in the past, um, thou shalt not kill. But I say to you, anyone who calls his brother a fool is already what? Guilty. You have heard how it was said in the past, love your neighbors, hate your enemies. But I say to you, do what? Love your enemies. I posted that thing on my Facebook and some people came and said, Jesus said we should love our enemies, but he didn't give us prayer for him. Because I was talking about those who are praying against the enemies. I hope you know one of your enemies are witches. Eh? Witches and witches. I hope you know they are part of the enemies. Eh? If you are living in the same compound with a witch or a wizard, who comes at night to press you? And you wake up in the morning. Let's even say we bruises on your body. When you are praying, are you going to say, Lord, see that which bless her with long life and prosperity in the name of Jesus? Will you do that? What will you do? Holy Ghost. Now, see people who cannot forgive which. <laughs> and it's now somebody who tried to kill you that you will forgive. And somebody say, eh, Witches are not part of the enemies we should forgive. Because Exodus chapter, is it 19? Or there about say, suffer not the witch to live. You think Jesus did not know that scripture when he said, forgive all your enemies. Did you hear Jesus say, forgive all your enemies except the witches? In the first place, quickly say, if you are a Christian, you are living with a witch. And the witch can come into your house, press you at night. Then you know that your Christianity has come. The problem is not the which the problem is who? You. If you love me, keep my commandments. Thomas, where are the distinct? The commandments of the Lord are difficult. How can you love a woman? How can you love a woman who tried to kill you? How can a girl bring up a child? That is the product of rape by an armed robber without hating the child. You want to see the commandment of the Lord? Give me Hosea 
No, no, give me Hosea. You are giving me Genesis. Let's, let me show you some, some part of the commandments of the Lord before we come to Matthew 5 and round this up. Hosea chapter 1 now, 2 to this, and those are the things I gave you. Where are you getting Genesis from, Thomas? I gave you Hosea and Ephesians. Please pay attention. Hosea chapter 1 from verse 2. Everybody on the screen, let's read. One to go. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of an unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Goma, daughter of Diblem, and she conceived. I don't know where you're getting this translation. That place you saw, go, marry a promiscuous woman. Other translation we say, go, marry a prostitute, a whore. New Jerusalem Bible, we say, whore. Go, marry a whore. Did Hosea marry the woman because he was attracted to her? Why? Because God said to him, go and marry a whore. Remember, I've been telling those of you who are praying for revelation of who to marry. You remember, ba? those girls were in the habit of asking God, show me who I will marry. I have always told you, it is not God's business to choose for you who you will marry. God has made people available for you to decide. But some of you want to marry by vision. And I've always referred you to this scripture. The day God will tell you who you will marry, you will not like it too. See what he told the prophet. This is the only prophet. And about the only time God decided for somebody who he will marry. Who did he tell him to go and marry? A whore. In our Nigerian language, an ashaw. That is who God told him to go and marry. That is Hosea chapter 1 from verse 2. Go to chapter 3, the same thing. Let's go to chapter 3. Hosea 3, 1 to go. Let's read again. Yahweh said to me, Go again. Love a woman who loves another man. And what? An adulteress. And love her as Yahweh loves the Israelites, although they turn to other gods and love raisin cake. Go and marry another woman who does not love you. And then bring her. Is that easy? Eh? That is the commandment of the Lord. How is that possible? By the way, I was thinking about this thing, and what I'm going to say now may be outrageous. People should forgive me. If you want to beat me, come to my house after mass. If you want to beat me, come to my house. Please go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 from verse, um, I think it's 25. So have it at the back of your mind that God commanded his commandment. So Hosea did not marry the woman because he loved the woman. He married woman because he loved God who has commanded him. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will do what? You will keep my commandment. Remember, you are not keeping the commandment because you love that commandment. You are keeping the commandment because what? You love me. Ephesians 5. Hmm. Oh. They say we are carnal people. We don't know things of the spirit. I'm taking you deep now into the dangerous meaning of God's word. Ephesians 5 from verse 25. Let's read. One to go. Husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy by washing her in cleansing water with a form of words so that when he took the church to himself, she would be glorious with no speck or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and faultless. How did the woman that Christ married become free of wrinkles and spots and faultless? How did she become there? Did, she, did he marry a woman that was already made free of wrinkles? No. He was one who sacrificed himself. He saw a freckled, wrinkled woman. Then he took the pain of putting her in order so that those wrinkles go, those specks go, those spots go. So he did not marry a good woman. He made the person he married good. I think born again, Holy Ghost-filled Christians 
should start marrying prostitutes. If we want to end prostitution in this world, brothers and sisters who are filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, I think people should start marrying prostitutes. Hello? <laughs> See the way they're looking at me. Huh? When he says wrinkles and spots, he's talking about moral and spiritual problems. It's not physical beauty. Don't you think that brothers and sisters who have you the Holy Spirit should marry prostitutes? Then the sisters who have you the Holy Spirit should marry wayward guys. If you follow the logic of Ephesians 5, that's what it means. But every born again Christian, you are looking for a sister who is uh, born again, who has flawless character to marry. Same thing with the, with the sister. You are looking for godly man, a man who is fearing God. But if we go through what God has told Josiah right now and what Jesus has done in Ephesians 5, which is the basis of Christian marriage, you can see that what we are doing isn't close to what Jesus did. Please take me to shift the baby. It's disturbing, please. Praise God. Praise God. Oh. The best way to end prostitution is that Brothers and sisters who have you the Holy Ghost, the born again, they should marry them. If your holiness and sanctity is not so strong that when a prostitute encounters you, she changes, then how can you claim to be holy? 1 Corinthians 7, 14 says, the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the believing husband and the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing wife. In other words, if you marry somebody who is an unbeliever, your own sanctity will do what? We flow into them because the Bible says the two shall become <laughs> prostitutes and whores should be the bride. Unborn again, Christian, bring them out of the streets. Marry them. When people become one, they are now like Christ, doing what? The way people are looking at me. I know I thought I was going to say something outrageous. Am I saying something based on that word? Eh? If your mind goes to Old Testament, which says, he who finds a good wife, that's the Old Testament. <laughs> he who finds a good wife, and that's the Old Testament. Jesus never makes reference to that. In the New Testament, Ephesians 5 is the basis for marriage. Husband, love your wife. He didn't say, marry who you love. He said, love who you want. We are married. It is your love, sacrificial love, that now makes that woman what you want her to be. You don't go and pick an already made woman. No, you go and pick the one that is not made at all. And you begin to make her. That is what Ephesians 5 is all about. That's what the Bible says husband should do. And that's what I'm saying Christians should be all about. I've quoted for you 1 Corinthians 7, 14. It says the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the believing husband. And vice versa. Why are you all looking for godly men and women? So who will marry the remaining ones? And how are they going to be saved? Because marriage is about salvation. The ultimate thing about marriage is what? Salvation. You see, people are not convinced. Now that they say we they canal. Now I'm taking you into the deeper meaning of the word. I'm taking you deeper into the meaning of the word. And I say we are not. We would, so, some people think that being in the spirit means you come and you kabash in the church. You slay under music and all of that. And then you speak in tongue and go. You know, that's what some of us think is how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit is to do the impossible. Praise God. Praise God. Oh. If all the Holy Ghost filled brothers marry the Holy Ghost filled sisters, who will save the Holy Ghost empty ones? It's like AA. Genotype, going to marry AA. It's unfair now. If AA marries AA, who will marry AS? Why well, you know that AS and AS cannot marry? If AS and AS marry, what will happen? Eh? SS. And we are populating the world with C class. But if AA marries AS, no problem. You don't have, you're not going to have SS. So AA are Holy Ghost filled. Christians. AS are what? The whores, the prostitutes, and all of that. Go and marry them. <laughs> hey, God. No, <laughs> you are looking at me. Thank God I'm not supposed to marry God. Thank you very much. I'm a priest. 
Men of God, I mean men of God, men of God, men of God should marry prostitutes. Have you not read in the Bible that prostitutes were very comfortable with Jesus? Let me tell you, those days, <clears throat> it was a taboo for a rabbi to be seen in public with a woman. It was a taboo. It was one of the ways you measured the holiness of a Jewish rabbi. That's why the Pharisees were always scandalized whenever they saw Jesus with women. At the point, a woman came, the woman that was anointing his leg. Remember what some of them say in their heart? They say, if this man were truly a prophet, he would have known who this woman is that is touching her. A woman without reputation, with bad reputation. Rabbis never mix with women. John, like many of you don't want to see your priest with girls. If, may, if any of you is passing and see me talking with one pretty girl and we are smiling, even if you never wanted to greet me before, you would greet me. Hey, Father, have fun, huh? In your mind, you are just letting me know, Father, I don't see you. But just continue. <clears throat> it was a taboo. So the Pharisees couldn't understand how Jesus was not only comfortable publicly with women, coming so close and touching him, but prostitutes, known prostitutes. And the same Jesus will say, prostitutes will make their way. Why was he coming there with prostitutes? Because it's when they come close, they catch the atmosphere of sacredness that he exudes, the aura of divinity. That now changes their life completely. So if you are not so spiritual that you can go out there, pick a prostitute and wed her, and turn her into a saint. Stop coming to my face and telling me I'm a carnal priest. Stop telling other people that they are carnal. Your power as a Christian, like I said, is not kabashing in the church. We are kabashing in the church and prostitutes are multiplying. You are the light of the world. <laughs> Go take a darkness and do what? Transform me. Hello. All the young boys say, who are not married, am I giving you now? <laughs> Am I giving you insight on how you are going to choose your wife? Praise God. <laughs> Nobody here wants to go and marry prostitutes. But if you follow that commandment, what God told them, Hosea, and from this thing, you could see what I'm talking about. What the Bible says you should not sleep with a prostitute, First Corinthians 6, it didn't say don't marry a prostitute. Oh, God, though, why am I even saying all of this? My point is this. See how extremely difficult it is to keep God's commandments. That's why it's easier for you and I to do worship than to keep commandments. And the most difficult of all God's commandments is love. The most difficult thing in this world to do is love. Love is not likeness. Don't confuse likeness. Many of us have said before, we like God, we don't love God. We like people, we don't love people. You like what you use. You do what? You like what you use. But love is about sacrifice. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. In other words, it's no longer about you. And check all those commandments. Somebody slaps in here, you turn the other cheek. They are rewardless. They are thankless commandments. There is nothing you gain from it. The highest you came close to a little reward, you say, I bless those who persecute you and all of that. Love your enemies and all of that. I say, that's what your heavenly father be, so that you'll be like your heavenly father. What kind of thing is that? They are all thankless. There is none of them that is to your own advantage or to your own benefit. Not even emotional gratification. When somebody insults you and you bless the person, what is emotional gratification? Not even as tiny as emotional gratification. All the commandments Jesus gave in Matthew 5. That was Jesus taking the place of Moses. Not what Jesus is saying to them. For all these years and generations and millennia, you have been listening to Moses. Now a new Moses is here. A greater than Moses is here. Now you've heard how it was said in the past. But I am saying to you, in other words, these are the new commandments by which you now live your life. Check all of them. There is no promise of any reward attached to any of them. And he says, you do it. If you love me, keep my, keep my, keep my. How can I live in the same house with a woman who tried to poison me? How can I kick my car? Call my wife who just quarreled with me. Called me all kinds of name, woman rapper. And it's time for her to go to the saloon. And I'll kick the car, turn on the AC and say, Come, it's time for you to go to the saloon. Let me take you. 
How could you pray for a witch or a wizard who is praising you at night for his or her good? And it is shocking that Christians are running away from these things. I put this on my Facebook wall. There was a, a girl that was thrown away. Her people say she was a witch. And somebody, an unbeliever, man, or maybe she's a believer, I don't know. But another person picked her up. Loved her. Today, if you see the picture of the girl, eh? you will marvel. She's like what? A model. Love changed a witch. First of all, I don't even know whether she's actually. How do people even know who is a witch? Hello? Praise God. Do. And those of you who believe in witches and witches, how do you know a witch from a non-witch? Eh? They are what? Attitude. Give me one. She said they are attitude. No, give me one. They are aggressive and unforgiving. Hey, <laughs> life is all about the way they are the witches will I be now. <laughs> Many of you are carrying grudges. And I agree with her. He said they are aggressive, they are unforgiving. So any man who is aggressive and beats his wife, he's a witch. I'll be madam. Is that what you're saying? Uh -huh. So there are many witches here now. <laughs> That's why the first thing to do is to put your hands in your hands and say, Lord, deliver me, I'm a witch. They are also jealous, Abby. When something good is happening to another person, they are feeling bad. And when something bad is happening to people, they are feeling good. How many of you have not felt bad when something is happening to another person? You see, the first witch to pray against is yourself. Lord, I am a witch, forgive me. <laughs> so how else you know witches? They fly. Has any of you seen a witch flying at night before? How are they taking no witch now? What did I want to ask? Did you hear that the apostles encountered any witch in their ministry? Or they were not existing those days? Eh? Did you hear that any Christian in the apostolic time had any encounter? Kind of I want to know how we know who the witches are. That's what I want to know. In any case, if you go to the U.S., and even in Nigeria, witches have their association. Abby, are you aware that they are registered? <laughs> Many of you don't know. Those of you who are filled with Holy Ghost now, the witches in Nigeria said they have less support to the president-elect. Uh, they even say we should pray for him. So even witches are praying. Now, I just want to know, how do you know who the witches are? We that cannot tolerate little injustice. We that cannot forgive wakashege. Are we the people who are going to forgive someone who tried to shoot? It is not possible unless. Everybody say unless. Yes. Let me tell you, neighbor, it's not possible unless. The essence of what I'm trying to tell let you know is that you see the commandments of God. We are playing. We Christians, we are still playing. We are not anywhere near keeping that commandment. And unfortunately for us, this is where Jesus says, how you love me. This is how you know you love me, by keeping my commandments. Those commandments I told you. That is how you know you love me. We are nowhere near. Nowhere near. And we say we are spiritual people. Love is the hardest thing, it is the hardest, and yet it is the greatest. So it is not possible, we are like Mary, when, when the angel said to her, you will conceive and bear a son. What did Mary say? I am a virgin. I don't know a man, how is this possible? When it comes to keeping the commandments of God, all of us are virgins. God is telling you and I to conceive without having sexual experience with another man or woman. How is that possible? How did it become possible with Mary? What did the angel say to her? The angel said, the Holy Spirit shall. That's why Jesus said to them, he said, I will give you another advocate. That's the Holy Spirit. You can't keep God's commandments, especially the commandment of love, if the Holy Spirit is not involved. It's not possible. It's not possible. And one of the greatest manifestations of the Spirit in a Christian's life is love. Galatians 5, love is one of the fruits of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13, where St. Paul talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit from 1 Corinthians 12. Where did he end? What did he end with? He ended with what? Love. 
And love is the greatest. And then you will go ahead and say, if I can speak in tongues or prophesy or see vision, if I even give my body to be burnt without love, he say, I am what? I am nothing. You can't do without the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate. Advocate here from the Greek word parakletos. That parakletos is interpreted by so many English words. Advocate, counselor, intercessor, um, which other one? But the word I want all of you to go home with is helper. Everybody say helper. Everybody say helper. Say, I can't do it by myself. Say, I can't do it by myself. I need divine help. That's where the Holy Spirit comes. Romans 5.5 5 says, the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Catch your husband red-handed committing adultery. We forgive him. How many of us married men here, if you catch your wife red-handed in the very act of adultery, we forgive her? I'm asking you these practical questions. But if you don't go home and think about this, you just come to church and we feel all those few good things we do and we go. We are not measuring this. We are not going anywhere. These are the things I think about and I'm like, God, are you sure this heaven, I can make it? I don't know about you. Are you sure? How many of you here will have two tubas of yam? Only two. And somebody else doesn't have any and comes to you and you will gladly give her or him one. How many of us could do that? Think about it. If you're saying you will, as I'm talking to you right now, some of you here, you have more than five million in your account. There are people who don't have one cobble. Have you given them anything? <laughs> Christian needs. You say when somebody takes your cloak, go and carry the coat and do what? And give to the person. But you are dragging land with your cousins and you have said over my dead <laughs> Christian needs. If you love me, do what? If you love me, do what? If you love me, do what? Keep my commandment. It's, not, it's practically impossible. That's why I need the Holy Spirit. So the angel said to Mary, when the Spirit comes upon you, you receive power. The only way you can love is by power. There's something I call love muscle. If you don't develop your love muscle, forget it. What we do is like. We like people. A man sees a woman, he likes her sheep. He, may, he takes her as wife. A woman sees a man, he likes his shape on his money, his pocket. He takes her, that is likeness. <laughs> you buy a car because you, you are using it, you like it. The clothes you are wearing, you like it because it's doing something for you. That's not love. Love is when you are gaining nothing from it. But you are doing it because the person you love has asked you to do that. That's what Jesus is asking from us. It's thankless. It's thankless. But eventually, eventually, there is no one who does what God wants that will ever regret it. And today, he says, I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate. Pentecost is coming. Pentecost is coming. Anticipate the Holy Spirit. When you go home today, write the Christian demands of Jesus that is too difficult for you to do. Some you are not even doing. Is it forgiveness? Go back to Matthew 5 from verse 20. Take all, those are the commandments he's talking about. Go. When Jesus was asked, which is the greatest commandment of God? What did he say? Love the Lord your God, Abby, with all your heart. And then love your neighbor. Why did he not mention worship? Think about all the things Jesus makes the mind of us and the things we are hearing in our pulpits today. Compare them and see. So go and write it. Unforgiveness. You and your wife have been having issues. There is no reconciliation. There can be no reconciliation where there is no forgiveness. You have been terribly hurt. You are the one who has been hurt. And he says... Leave your gifts, set it aside, go back and do what? And make peace. 
Have you gone back to initiate peace with the person who wronged you? Do you pray? Do you take your time to pray for your uncle who swore that you and your siblings, since your father died, will never amount to anything? Now you have amounted to something, but you still remember. Have you, do you take your time to pray for his well-being? If you love me, you will do what? You keep my commandments. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of your faithful, grant by the gifts of the same spirit, who may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ. May the Holy Spirit empower you and empower me. I didn't hear you, amen. I say, may the Holy Spirit empower you and empower me. May he enlighten us. May he take us deeper into the word of God. May he make us not hearers, but also doers of the word. May he advocate for us. May he intercede for us. May he counsel us. And may he help us in all our weaknesses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe in one God. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, he realizes us. For the sake of his sorrowful passion.